Hello and welcome to the information and safety briefing video for the long course weekend. My name is Scott Powell, I'm one of the race directors and I'm going to talk you through some of the key points to help ensure that you will enjoy what will be an awesome weekend of sport and also have some very important safety advice to ensure of your safety and that of the general public. As well as this video, you'll receive an event information pack which will be sent out via email and available on the event website. It's really important that you check your email account as sometimes depending on your account settings, it can be placed in another folder and not directly into your inbox. We'll also be posting information videos on social media in the week leading up to the event. So please make sure you sign up to all our platforms to keep up with the up-to-date information. Okay, so it's gonna be a very, very busy weekend, lots going on. So for the full itinerary, please check your event guide and the website for full details. We're expecting around about 10,000 athletes, possibly around about 30,000 traveling supporters. So Tenby and Pembrokeshire in general is gonna be super busy. Uh, for parking point of view, it's gonna be exceptionally busy during the weekend. So again, please refer to your event guide for details and that will help you plan your weekend. So moving on to registration. Registration will be open from the Thursday and we would welcome as many of you as possible to come down on the Thursday. Uh, take the pressure off yourselves as an athlete and also the registration team um, for the rest of the weekend. At uh, registration, we will ask you to bring your QR code, which you will be emailed. Again, please check your email account. Uh, ID for insurance and medical purposes. Uh, it's really critical that only athletes at the event of the race are on the race course because should an incident happen on, on the course, uh, we have relevant medical information that could provide life-saving treatment. We need you also to bring a signed disclaimer. And also at this late stage, it's not possible to change any distances online or directly through the office. It must happen at registration. There'll be a chip timing desk in the registration area. Uh, there will be an admin fee for the new race materials that we will need to issue you. And, and please avoid times between two and five on Friday as we will not be taking any amendments to uh, race distances. And also we will be prioritizing swimmers at this point. If you fail to notify registration and the timing team of your change of distance, and you change when you're out on course, then unfortunately, you'll be listed on the classifications as a DNF. However, you will still be entitled to a medal at the finish line. As well as registration, uh, we have the Wales Triathlon Show, our expo, which will be again open from Thursday. We got over 56 stands, some incredible brands coming down this year. And Thursday is our special offer day. So if you want to snap up a bargain, come along Thursday. And for the opening times for the rest of the weekend, please check the website or your event guide. So from what you'll get at registration, uh, we, everything you need for the event will be issued at reg. Nothing will be mailed to you in the post. So from a chip timing, bib number, sticker information, for the Friday you will receive a swim hat uh, that you must wear. You must wear the swim hat that we issue you with. If any of your swim hats uh, break uh, on your approach to the swim start, we will have replacements uh, at the start line. So. Uh, please see uh, a member of the team there. We also give you two hat stickers uh, to go either side of your swim hat and a hand tattoo. Uh, it's critical that you have that on you. As well as that, you'll get a timing chip which will be uh, on a Velcro strap uh, and your timing chip is actually the red block. Uh, it's really critical that you put your timing chip on the outside of your wetsuit and also, failing, uh, and also facing outside. Uh, failure to do so, unfortunately, will result in you not getting a time. If you happen to lose your chip during the swim itself, then please report to a member of the timing team at the finish line. So bike day, you'll receive helmet stickers, uh, one bib number, which mean, must be on your back and visible at all times, uh, a bike number for the front of your bike, and a helmet chip. Now, the helmet chip is a small strip, a see-through strip, uh, please take care when you're opening your event pack uh, because it can get lost uh, with, with everything else. So it's actually a really critical part of your pack. Uh, this must be located on the left-hand side of your helmet and not on any reflective elements of your helmet. 
Uh, not any, on any sponge parts because they could fall off, especially if it, uh, it happens to rain and not on a carbon helmet. So if you do have a carbon helmet, please report to the chip timing desk and registration and they will be able to assist you with an alternative. On Runday, you'll receive a bib number which will have your timing chip incorporated into it. And again, it's really critical. It must be visible at all times during the event. So on the Friday and on Runday, we have a bag drop facility. Again, please see your event guide or website for details. So moving on to swim day itself, uh, there will be activities down the beach from four o'clock. And of course we have a long course weekend kinder. Uh, they will be starting on the beach and they will be opening the long course weekend. Always a fantastic atmosphere, so come down, down and support our young athletes of the future. Um, followed by the whale swim itself. Um, athletes will be invited in the water to acclimatize to the water temperature between 6 and 6.30. But all athletes will need to have exited the water by 6.30 and head into the swim start pen. It's a self-ranking one wave start. So we'd advise, we would advise any weak swimmers to start towards the back of the field um, and, and just make sure you've got plenty of water to enjoy the swim. There's a one hour cutoff uh, for the second lap. Uh, that will start after the last athlete has entered the water. And there's a two hour cutoff for the overall swim based on your chip time. We have an amazing water safety crew out there looking after you. So if you need their assistance, please don't panic, lie on your back and put your hands in the air and they will get there as quickly as they can. Water safety are there to help you. So should you need their assistance, uh, and then can complete the course, you'll not be disqualified. And please listen to their advice at all times. And we do reserve the right to remove anyone from the event if we deem your own safety is at risk. So it's a beach start and you'll keep the first boy to the left hand side. All other boys will be to your right hand side. Please refer to the event pack or the website for your course maps. We'd also advise you for the last around about 100 meters before you head towards the shore, to vigorously kick your legs. That makes sure you get some blood flow back into your legs and helps preventing you from getting dizzy uh, as you approach the shoreline and, and return to your feet. We're also mega passionate about where we deliver our events, so litter is a huge thing for us. So if you create any litter on the event day, please put it in the bins provided or take your litter home. Okay, so moving on to bike day, the whale sportif. Uh, helmets are mandatory for every single athlete. And whilst this year we've introduced road restrictions, uh, we cannot 100% guarantee that the course will be traffic free. So please ride with this in mind at all times. This year we also have security pens. Uh, for safety reasons, any athletes on course that are not part of the event will be held in their security pen until the completion of the ride. Okay, so the start information. Wave one is an invitation and only wave, which will start at 6.30 a.m. And that's for athletes who need the maximum time on course to ensure they finish uh, the courses within the cutoff times. Then we'll have the top 10 male and female athletes from the long course weekend. They'll go down the ramp, followed by our 70 and 112 mile athletes. Anyone riding with tri bars will need to start at the back of the pack. Uh, this is for safety reasons. Um, we're the only mass participation bike event that are allowing tri bars. We've managed to get them passed this year because we open for entries uh, after announcing the road restrictions. So please ride responsibly. And it's also important that if you ride on tri bars, then drafting rules will apply. And we have plenty of motorbikes out there uh, looking out for this. It's critical that your bike must be in a roadworthy condition. It's your responsibility as an athlete to ensure that they, it is. However, we will be checking uh, bikes going into the start pen and we do reserve the right uh, not to allow athletes to start if your tires, brakes or any other part of your equipment is deemed to be faulty. Please ride within your own ability and within the condi conditions of the road. Whilst we have road restrictions in place, it is absolutely critical that athletes must stay at the left-hand side of white lines where applicable. 
any athlete crossing a white line will be disqualified. We desperately don't want to disqualify any athletes over this weekend, but where your safety and that of the general public is at risk, we will do so where necessary. There are some sections on course where we share the carriageway, which is why we need you to keep to the left-hand side at all times. Riding in groups, please no more than two abreast, and make sure that you're confident of riding in a group, as it's a completely different experience to riding as an individual. Marshals are there for reference points only, and we do have some crossing points for cars on course. Um, there may be times where we will have to hold bikes uh, to allow some traffic to pass. Naturally, we will keep this to an absolute minimum, but if you are asked to stop, it'll only be for a very short period of time, and we do very much appreciate your patience. There are some cattle grids on course. They will be signed with the National Highway signs. Uh, our advice is generally just to ignore the cattle grid and just to continue at the speed you go in. If you react when you're on top of the cattle grid, you could find yourself having an, an issue. We, we do have feed stations out on course uh, for the 70 and 112 miles. Your first feed station is at 40 mile mark. It's going to be an exceptionally busy feed station. We do have athletes out on course that are looking for a fast time and athletes out on course that are just out there for a good time. If you're out there for a good time, please make sure you rack your bike uh, responsibly at the feed station and allow any athletes chasing a fast time to pass through unimpeded where possible. Again, litter is super important to us and if you're carrying any nutrition on course, then if you can carry it full, you can carry it empty and please dispose of any of your litter in the bins provided at the feed station. Unfortunately, anyone found dropping litter will be disqualified. As you come back to Tembi, uh, you'll come to the, the top of Tudor Square, White Lion Street, where you'll head to the finish line, which will be straight on, or you will be turning right to head out on your second lap. If you are heading to the finish line, the finish line is gonna be very, very busy. It's gonna be an incredible atmosphere. There are pedestrian crossing points, so we ask you to ride, scrub your speed right off and ride slowly and responsibly in that area. Any athlete that's deemed to be riding too fast ignores that any marshal's advice or riding dangerously, unfortunately, would be disqualified. If you're heading out onto your second lap, it's really important that once you go through Tembi for a very short period, uh, you will be sharing the carriageway with cars. It will be open road section. It will be signed so you will be notified where they are. Again, please ride responsibly in this area. We do have cutoff times, they will be enforced as advertised. However, we do reserve the right to amend them at any time. All athletes must uh, head to the finish line if you miss the, uh, the cutoff times. Uh, we will have a sweep vehicle on course uh, if you should wish to take advantage of that. Any abusive officials, locals or competitors will result in an instant disqualification and we'll also remove you from the rest of the event. Again, it's really important to us that we protect the local community and we desperately don't want this to happen. It's advised that you carry a mobile phone at all times should you need assistance out on course. There is an event hotline number on the back of your bib number. The event organisers reserve the right to issue penalties and disqualify as they see fit. Okay, moving on to run day. Uh, for bus information, heading you out to your relevant start lines, please check the website or event pack. Again, whilst road restrictions are in place, we cannot guarantee that the course will be traffic free, which is why we strongly advise you against running with earphones, because you need to be aware of the environment and be able to follow marshal's instructions at all times. There are very well stocked feed stations out on course. They will alternate between water and feed stations. And we do have eco zones at the feed station, so there'll be a, a line before the station and a line after the station. Any litter must be disposed of the bins within this area. Any athlete for, found dropping litter outside this area, again, will be disqualified. I keep repeating it, but we are massively passionate about where we deliver our races, and we want to leave it pristine as we found it. As you come into the finish line, we do have a Run With A Loved One channel, so we welcome any of your family members to enjoy that incredible atmosphere down the finish shoot with you. If you are running with a loved one, maybe keep to one side in case there's any athlete chasing a the time. It gives them a little avenue to come down the other side. 
Okay, so for the fourth medal ceremony for our long course weekend athletes, uh, once you finish run day, there will be a gazebo at the end uh, and you will be asked to put in your bib number. It will pr print out uh, a small ticket which will show that you have completed the long swim, the long bike and the marathon. You will need this ticket to enter the red carpet ceremony. Also, you must wear your event issue t-shirt and preferably have all your medals with you. It just makes a spectacular photo at the finish line. We also wear, as I said earlier, we're going to have a huge number of spectators come in and travel in to see the event and we want you guys to have an amazing time as well. So please see our website for details, there will be a spectator information guide there as well. Thanks to all our sponsors and our partners for making this event possible. Thanks to you as athletes for entering. A massive thank you to the local community and also our huge team of volunteers who work tirelessly over the whole weekend to make sure you enjoy the event and that you get to the finish line safely. For next year's event, please check out the website. Uh, the date will be released and the entries will be open very shortly after this year's event. Once again, thank you for entering. Good luck with your final preparations and we can't wait to welcome you to Pembrokeshire in the near future.